Friends, good morning and welcome to another week. And I'm aware that while our own weeks may have settled into a routine pattern at the moment, each of our lives will be very different from one another's. Some of us will be as busy as ever on the front lines of our supermarkets, our hospitals, our schools, our care homes, our farms and elsewhere with no rest or respite in sight. Others of you will be juggling uh, being at home with childcare, homeschooling, working from home and more. Others of you will be facing another week in isolation and perhaps feeling down and struggling with the seemingly endless routine of isolation and lockdown. As we begin this new week though, I pray that our eyes, our vision, would be lifted beyond our immediate horizon, whatever that horizon may be. Allow me to reminisce for a moment. Back in the summer of 1988, I stood at a site for which nothing had prepared me. I was standing on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, marvelling at the magnificence of the natural wonder. Yes, I knew the facts. It averages 10 miles, it averages 10 miles across and a mile deep along its 277 mile length as the River Colorado carves and curves its way through the Arizona desert. But when I stood there, it wasn't those facts that struck me. It simply took my breath away and it made a deep and lasting impression on me. Reading and studying the New Testament letter to the Ephesians is like that. And that's what we're going to be doing this summer as a church family over the course of the coming two or three months. Nothing quite prepares us for Ephesians. It is simply magnificent, which shouldn't surprise us when we realise that it is God, the living God, speaking to his church, to us. Many readers over the centuries have been brought to faith in Christ by reading its message. One famous Christian, Professor John Mackay, came to put his faith in the Lord Jesus as a child through reading this letter on his own one summer on a mountain in Scotland. He later wrote about Ephesians. He wrote this, that it distills the essence of the Christian religion the most authoritative and the most consummate compendium of our holy Christian faith. The letter is pure music. It is truth that sings. It is doctrine set to music. And Ephesians doesn't teach doctrine in a vacuum. Doctrine leads to doxology, to uh, praise. Doctrine also impacts daily living. A right faith, a right understanding leads to right action and a godly life. Chapters one to three you will find as you read it, teach the foundations of faith in Christ. And then chapters four to six, teach how our faith is to be seen in Christ-like living. This week, not all of us, but some of us, will have a real opportunity with perhaps more time on our hands to read through the letter. That's why I'm doing this thought today on Monday morning, so as to give you the opportunity to read the whole of this letter sometime this week. Perhaps something we wouldn't normally have the time or opportunity to do in our busy lives. It'll take about 30 minutes, or if you're a slow reader like me, about 45. And why not as well read Acts chapter 19 and 20, where Luke records for us the events that happened as Paul and his fellow church planters established these fledgling churches in Ephesus and the surrounding towns in what is now modern day Turkey. This coming Sunday, 3rd of May, I'll do an introduction to the letter in our service and our sermon and to the events of Acts chapter 19 and 20. And then the following Sunday, that's Sunday the 10th of May, we're going to have two services. I will pre-record a shorter service, mainly for adults, and we'll get into the meat of Ephesians chapter one. And that will be available on the website uh, from the first thing on that Sunday morning. As it will be the second Sunday of the month, at 10.30, Libby and Ruth will lead a differently themed family service via Zoom that day. But my prayer for us 
this term as we study Ephesians as local churches in Troll and Angersley is wonderfully, simply and gloriously an echo of Paul's prayer for these early believers. So let me finish this morning by simply praying Paul's opening prayer for them. It's my prayer for you all and I pray that it would be your prayer for others as well. Let me pray. For this reason, prays Paul, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Amen. Have a great day and enjoy reading this mighty letter. Bye for now.